Final word, Adam Collins, Jeff Lemon. Thank you to Daniel Rasul for making time before jumping on the plane. Let's go back in the direction of the subcontinent ourselves. Sure. Australia, India, women. Test match one on Christmas Eve by the Indian side. Mm-hmm. Then Australia fought back hard in the one-day internationals. Yes, this was. Um, this has been quite entertaining, this series. So Australia whitewashed the ODIs, um, the second biggest ever run chase in women's ODIs in the first of those games. Um, so India made 282. Yasta Kabatia, whose work you've mm. enjoyed particularly. The stylish left-hander. Stylish? Stylish. Billy Stylish. Double threat, so dual threat. Yeah, she's keeps. got great, great hands behind yeah, the stumps too. Yeah. Big um, fan. Yeah, doesn't always get to take the yeah. gloves, but does keep well. Um, so she made 49 opening, but they were 182 for seven. And then Jamima Rodriguez. Um, and Pooja Vastrika, who is mm. one of my real favourites um, the last few years since. But she came here, came to Australia and played in that, that series up in the up on the Gold Coast and was just outstanding during that series. Seam bowler, bangs the deck, smashes the ball down the order. She, so she's batting at nine. She makes 62 from 46, batting with Rodriguez, who makes 82 from 77. Um, very, very enterprising partnership. Wickets get shared around, six wicket takers, the two leg spinners bowling for Australia in King and Wareham. And then Australia just strolled it. They chased it four wickets down, <laughs> four overs to spare. After Healy makes a duck in the first over. They probably relish chases like that. Yeah. Remember a couple of years ago, they were in New Zealand, made a big score in one of those lockdown mm. matches. And afterwards, yeah. I think it was Rachel Haynes says something like, yeah, well, we didn't mind that. Mm. Gives us the chance to flex our muscle a little right. bit. Um, you know, with, with batters like Perry and then Litchfield, mm. who's just, well, she's emerged. She's more than emerged. She is set now. She's oh. in the top few batters in Australia. Uh, and then talented players like Mooney who remain mm. in their peak. like They see more runs to chase, more runs to get, more yeah. fun to have. We remember when Adapatu made that 178 not out in Bristol and then Lanning chased it. Was it one down or two down? She, she made, made 150, 152, yeah. I think, 152 yeah. not. Um, and she's not there anymore. So this is the post-Lanning era. You know, no Lanning, no problem at the moment. Litchfield opening makes 78. Perry at three, the old Lanning spot, makes 75. Mooney, 42. McGrath, 68, not out. And that's it. So they just walked that one in. Ridiculous. Um, the second one, Australia bat first 258 for eight. Um, y- y- yes, if you're annoyed that we're doing the scores the English way, I just, I've been doing OBO all for weeks and that's how we have to I do it. I think I take the view that if I'm doing Australian radio or whatever it is, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm in Australia doing an sure. Australian test match, fine, Australian yep. way. Yep. Everywhere else does it the other way. They do. So um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with this. As, as internationalists, in, in the same way that I think everybody should be using kilometres and everybody should be using degrees uh, Celsius... Um, probably it's probably it's time for us to stop being the Fahrenheit country of the cricket world and and go like runs runs are the things that we need the game and then the wickets are the secondary. I contradict that on miles an hour miles per hour with bowling. Yeah. I like miles per hour with bowling because the overall yeah. if you're a fast bowler hitting 100 is like the 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 goal. You know right. if you're a super fast bowler more than 160 kilometres 100 yeah. miles an hour sounds special. So I, I know we've talked about this on the show before, but the okay. only thing yeah. with that is is human height like feet and inches I, I can't visualize what a 172 centimeter person looks yes. like i have no idea if you tell me you're five foot eight i know what that means <laughs> i'm six foot five i know what that means i don't know what i am in centimeters i just don't know um it, it doesn't stick anyway the point is um <laughs> they make 258 for eight litchfield 63 perry 50 so the same two contributions all the way down gardner's the only player in single figures uh deep tishama takes five for 38 so another bag for Deep T, who's been doing that a lot lately. And then this one ended up being get to the a stunner. Um, Richard Gosh and Jamima Rodriguez again get together. They're 159 for two, just past halfway, cruising when Rodriguez gets out. And then there's a little bit of a squeeze. Sutherland and Wareham start slowing things down. And then they get Richard Gosh for 96 just before she gets to 100. They squeeze the lower order. Deep T Sharma's still there into the last over. 24 not out, but they fall three runs short. India, eight wickets down, almost got there, but not quite. Lose deep the series. Tea. Yeah, and deep T five for, and then almost the, the yeah. match winning innings, but not quite. And then after that, it must have been just a let down the third ODI. They get thrashed, India. Litchfield, 118. Healy, 82. So Which I think gave Litchfield the most number of runs ever in a three game series in India or something like that. Done. I read one of those factoids that jumped out at Crick Info. Yeah, 50 50 100 for her through the. Um, through that series middle order collapse but Gardner Sutherland King makes some runs late Australia make 338 their fourth biggest score in this format and bowl out India for 148 
the league spinners take five wickets between them. Sutherland, a couple more. Perry, 34 half centuries in one day international cricket. Now. How many tons? Two, only two. two. Yeah, she had that. Yeah, she didn't make one for problem. years. Had that. I guess it was a not a problem. It was a good problem to have when she, she went. She through. was not out a lot. She'd be ninety, yeah. not out a lot because she'd be there at the end of a chase or whatever it was. Because she made all of those half centuries. You'll have this written down in a spreadsheet mm. somewhere, Jeff. But after the twenty. 15, 20, 2014, yeah. 15. It was around that time when one, she started. She made one or two before 2015 down the order. Yeah. And then they brought her up to four at Hove, I reckon, in 2015. Yeah. And then after that, she made one like literally every second innings for the next five years. Well, that, that chart you can pull up on Crick Info with the cumulative batting yeah. average. So her batting average for the majority of her career was probably 20 something. It's up to 55, I think, in one day cricket mm-hmm. now. Um, it'll it, you will have rarely seen a career that's gone for as long as it has before having an incline like this. Yeah, yeah. in fact, there, there wouldn't have been anyone in one day. Well, she batted ten on debut. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and God, and she's it, been around a long time. Started when she was two thousand and seven, wasn't it? Crazy. 2000, yeah. Think about how different the world was in two thousand and seven. Yeah. And Kevin then, Sheedy was coaching Essendon. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how my brain works. Uh, what else? When um, did they did when did they last win a final? Uh, 2004. Okay. So we're going to get it to celebrate the 20 years because the finals in 2024 don't start until after mm. the 20th anniversary. Okay. So even if they top the ladder this year, which they won't, and um, head into the qualifying final with a head of steam, they'll still okay. be 20 years without finals wins. Interesting. Um, first T20, Litchfield again batting at six in, this time in the T20 team, makes 49 off 32. Australia all out for 141. So she almost had four 50 plus scores in a row. Um, and then Tita Sadu, who, yeah. who debuted recently last September, I think at the Asia Games, took four for seventeen. I like this. She's nineteen. Yeah. Like this is the this is the story of the WPL, isn't mm. it? That they're getting these players who are getting a chance to play on television in higher profile cricket, and then they're going, well, this is exactly what happened with WBBL. Mm-hmm. Players like well, Beth Moon is the best example of that. Wouldn't have been anywhere near national selection. Yeah. Bang the door down through the domestic T20 comp, gets opportunities for Australia. Well, so it proves here for Sadu, who probably wouldn't have been anywhere near it at that age and totally. did well in the WPL and here totally. she is. Yep. Um, and, you know, Mooney, Harris, these kind of players. And Grace Harris did come back in for the T20s. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, so Sadu gets Mooney, McGrath, Gardner, Sutherland as the four wickets, pretty useful through the middle. And then India... Just piss it in. 137 run mm. opening stand. Smriti Mandana, 54. Mandana. Shafali Verma, 64. Um, and they and Mandana gets out just before the end and um, they end up doing it one down comfortably. And then, second T20, Australia win it. India, 130 for eight. Kim Garth, who came into the side for Alana King, takes a couple. Sutherland and Wareham again. Uh, two for 17 and two for 18, respectively, from their four overs. I watched a bit of this That's in the pub shopping. after our live show with watching yeah. Garth and Shoot bowling together, just swinging, yeah, yeah. Like, hooping the ball. Shoot, mm. she's still doing it, right? Like her stock delivery, even when bowling to left-handers, yeah. she has the bravery to set a ball well outside the leg stump, knowing it'll still train back towards the woodwork. It takes mm. LB out of the equation, but she's so effective there. And Kim Garth, she's put on a yard, I reckon, since mm. the last time I, I've seen her bowl. She said she wanted to be... Um, leading the Australian attack. She's keeping Darcy Brown out of the side at the moment. Uh, that takes some doing. She's, uh, well, what, what, Kim Garth now, mm. she's a World Cup winner uh, early like last really year. Really back there, like I've been interested yeah. by just, because, because you know, I've, maybe it's just a me problem, but I've always seen her as a good and useful player rather than like that sort of dominant attack leader kind of position. Um, well, and, it's and just Australia being have, in the system, right? Being, yeah. in, being in the Aussie system helps you maximise your potential. So mm. what she was able to do for Ireland and what she's able to do for Australia, there's yeah. a gap between those two levels. I guess they've just got so many decent-seeming all-rounders that in my mind, I'm like, I'm not sure where she sits vis-a-vis Sutherland or, or Heather Graham or other options who've got similar kind of skill sets. Um, very, very quick segue, as we mentioned Ireland, um, it was uh, immediately put to me by a member of the Cricket Island administration last night who'd listened to Andy Cockley interview and um, uh, took a mental note of the piece where he said that he would like to play he would like Australia to play a test match in Ireland before the next Ashes. Mm-hmm. So, okay. you know, we should hold them to account for that as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, anyway, the point is that, um, yeah, 130 and Australia chase at four wickets down. Perry in her 300th game makes 34 not out from 21 balls, hits a six off the last ball of the 19th over to win the game. Happy days, Elise Perry. Um, and Grace Harris, who came into the side, faced two balls in the first game, didn't bowl, and then got a thanks for coming in the second. So poor old Grace. Happens a lot to Grace. Having a Jodie Hicks. Yeah, she, um, she had that when she India. came back in the 
Women's Ashes at the start of 2022, I suppose. Well, even it when been. she debuted in 2013, she didn't get a hit. I think she played in three of the games and got a hit in one of them. Mm. Um, it smacked a couple in Cardiff. I reckon she hit a couple of sixes and made like 15 not out or something and then didn't, didn't get a hit in the other two from memory. Uh, Jeff, no, before, sorry, 2015, not 2013. Jeff, we're going to stay uh, broadly speaking with India um, after. Can we just mention 300 games for Elise Perry? Oh though? yeah, sorry. I mean, yeah, I know, I know, that. Elise Perry gets all of the plaudits compared, still compared to any of the other players in that team. But, um, like you said, 2007 start. It's like the prodigious amount of work that she's put in, and the fact that she still has the hunger to keep turning out for Australia when like your Mitchell Stark comparison she had she would have had every right three or four years ago to say nah it's good I'm done it probably helps that you know earnings have have gone through the roof in the last few years but she was probably pretty well set up before that I would have thought and she said during the week that she's open-minded to playing 400 um you know this is this isn't sort of like Farewell lap territory at all mm. for her. Um, it might be, as you say, the, the financial incentives are there, which is a wonderful thing. Mm. Uh, we've talked a lot in the show about players from a generation ago even who pulled up in their late 20s or mid-20s. Isha Gua, a good example of that. Ebony Rainford, Brent, another, who said that this is not going to quite pay the bills, mm-hmm. whereas now it'll pay the bills and some if you're someone like Perry. And sure, she's done so many other things she's so high profile that she'll never want for work but still mm. the, the the wider point stands that there is now an incentive structure for players like her to keep playing deep into their 30s and even the way she's been able to transition from being the best bowler in the world which she was for a number of years the most important fast bowler going around she's not really needed as a bowler for australia anymore they've yeah. totally overtaken the need they use her occasionally i'm not sure how much she bowled in the one day as this time around i wasn't paying attention to that particular part of it in the middle overs but still she isn't uh she be she is and has played as a specialist bat for years now mm. uh, and that's credit to her ability to continue getting better we often hear that from uh, dominant athletes, they just want to keep it getting better. Nathan Lyons says it all the time, right? I want to keep improving at this late stage of my career. Right. Perry's actually doing that. Uh, and why wouldn't she play 400 games unless she wants to go off and do something else, which she'd be entitled to do? Mm. Uh, there's no reason why we won't have another celebration of her in a few years' time. Yeah, go on. Go to 400. Go to 500. I don't know. See if you wanted enough. Why not? Um, what else have we got? We've got South Africa. We've got before, India. Yeah, before we get to that, just wanted to uh, say that we um, we have been wonderfully supported by Seba Super uh, through the course of this Australian summer. That's true. And even though I'm uh, I'm taking off this evening back to the UK, it is still very much the Australian summer. Two more test mm-hmm. matches here, two in New Zealand. Um, women's test match at Perth. Bunch of one-day internationals and T20s. The Australian women will play against South Africa. Lots of other cricket around the world, including uh, the England men playing in India. Uh, We're going to be very, very busy, boys. And throughout the summer, uh, we're bringing these shows to you in conjunction with Seabus Super in year number 40. We've spent a lot of time in the last couple of months just explaining where they fit in. For people who might have found the show more recently, of course, we first started working with Seabus all the way back in May 2019. But this milestone, you mentioned Perry's 300th game, 40 years is pretty bloody significant well, for October an October 2018, really, because they did the... Um, they, they did. did they the did series the in the UAE. Yeah, so they've had our back for a long time, Seabus, and... Uh, and um, they've enjoyed telling their story through our podcast, and their story is a mighty one. Eight point nine. So that's five years. Hang on, they're forty years old. That's five years. We've we've been there for one eighth. I like that of the of the sea bus journey. And and, right. and Elise Perry's probably played one eighth of Australia's women's yeah. internationals, if not more. Oh, probably more. Almost certainly more. Come yeah, to think of it, you would have. I mean, yeah, there, there wasn't nearly so much white ball stuff going no. on before. I mean, well, they, there was they no T twenties really. They only had T twenty for mm. a couple of years by that point. And she played very early in the. T20. She mm. didn't play Australia's first T20, but she played in the first few because they didn't start in 2004 when it when it started in England. They they started more in. Oh, I'm going to get this wrong off the top, uh, off the top of my head. Maybe it's 06 when okay. they when they start playing T20. So her cricket. career spans the entirety of Australia's T20 international. Just journey. about. Yeah, I reckon all... she, I reckon she plays like the third T20 that Australia plays. Well, Seabus like spans the entirety of the superannuation story in okay. Australia. There we go. To stick with that, mm. 40 years in in 2000 and. 24, the year we're now in. You're, I know, yeah. I'm intimidated by that. Feels like five minutes ago that we were mm. celebrating the turn of the millennium. I don't really like even numbers. You know, I prefer odd numbers oh, right. feel more comfortable. Whereas I'm an even number kind of okay. guy. Yeah, you I like things be. marrying up. Yeah, 
Yeah. I like things batching, being mm-hmm. divisible. Your prime numbers? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I could correctly identify a prime number in the wild. But okay. I know what they are in theory, but I don't know what any, an example of any You're of at peace them. with them, whereas I find them awkward. I know that You one, like to step on cracks. I like to step over cracks. I, like to, I know that one and three are prime numbers. Above that, I'm not confident. Uh, red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors. Primary colors, yeah. That's different. Is that right? Yes. Red, blue, and yellow. Yep, because you can mix those together to make okay. purple, green, and orange. Nice to know that something from 1989 at kindergarten is stuck yeah. in my brain. It's funny that Winnie's the same age as I was when I would have learnt that. The, the, anyway. only, the only times table I could do, because I'm spectacularly bad at numbers, for some reason, was the sixes. So goals, the sixes mate, I goals. got. Surely goals is I the reason. Even th- I don't think I was like even that much of a footy head at that point. Okay. I don't know. I just It just worked. And so there was just something that meant that it had to be cricket. Okay. Because I can actually go, oh, 15.3 overs to go. Well, that's how many balls that is. Like yeah. that's the one bit of arithmetic I can yeah. do in my head. Okay. Aside from the 17 times tables from working on roulette tables. <laughs> no, I'm good at the sixes too, but I'm certain it's goals. Um, <laughs> and hearing those numbers repeated sure. time and time again. Yeah. At eight, 56, et cetera. Um, where are we? Cbussuper.com.au. Here's another number for you. 8.99% average returns across that 40-year span. Their past performance in their default brackets, my super, close brackets mm-hmm. account, is no uh, indicator of future performance as splendid as it is. Yep. And um, we look forward to telling you more and more about them and their story and their pioneers and the people that made it possible and the innovative policy solution that is super across the next mm. couple of months. We don't have a new pledge for you today because, well, um, uh, we've got a lot on. Yep. <laughs> we haven't quite gotten around to that. Story we, time will be back this weekend, though. Yep. We've, we've, we've got we, a fair bit of... We, we, we're going to... Turbocharged story time a bit in the yep. next few weeks too. There'll be, there'll be a, a bit more action happening on that front because we've been a bit slack over the last couple of weeks. I think you can forgive us. I think most people will uh, understand we've been busy boys. But yeah, we'll do a nerd pledge. We'll do a story time show when I'm back in the UK for this upcoming weekend. Uh, and then we'll get back into that familiar rhythm where we have a nerd pledge number inside the show. But it's the nerd pledge numbers. It's the patron account. It's the Discord channel, which is the lifeblood of the final word. I was just corresponding with John O'Halen about this before, um, about how important this community has been for us through 2023. And so it will be in 2024 as well. Uh, that patron page which is morphed into the Discord channels is such a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, All the photos on there following the live show, I appreciated all of those uh, and the posts and so on from people who've had a chance to come out and see us do our show for the first time or meet us. There was a meet-up at the the Bob Hawke pub, Jeff, on Saturday Mm -hmm. night, which you were part of. I wasn't able to go, but... Very good. Um, the 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 the, the Kitsch Retro eighties Chinese restaurant in there um, does does Perfect. a fantastic service. I, I can't believe that you've not been inside that. They they serve a deep fried Viennetta. Oh what for dessert? Yeah, that's the next year. Dessert. Next time I'm in Sydney, I'll go to the Bob Hawke the pub. Hopefully problem. with our patrons. Patron.com forward slash the final word. Get involved now, and this year is going to be our biggest year yet. There mm-hmm. with heaps of live shows, but also just. Heaps going on within the community widely, more widely. Adelaide live show on the 19th is free, by the way. You don't need tickets for that, so just come along. And the final word game in Sydney on January 26th will be at Birch Grove Oval. Please come by. We've got uh, scorers. We've got frog box. We've got commentators. There'll be a video stream. There'll be commentary on the video stream. There'll be about 22 people trying to squeeze into an 11 one way or another. Right. Um, Peter Lewis is seeing how many he can muster for the opposition to see if we end up playing an 18 versus 18 sort of, right. um, you know, Victoria versus the gentlemen of England style. And uh, we'll see if we can have a riot as well. Maybe we'll take some bets um, and we'll have a riot and storm the that field. That sounds so much fun. Also, the Edinburgh Tour, not just the marathon in May, but the Edinburgh Tours, um, there's been some work going on behind the scenes. So more to say on that when I get back to England and can put some work into this. But we will be playing about five games, hopefully, in Edinburgh in late five August. games in Edinburgh. A lot going August. on. One night in Bangkok can make a grown man stumble. Uh, Stumbling, fair bit of that happened when India played South Africa and the test match finished in a day and a half. Interesting that uh, AB was saying that it was too much T20 cricket that meant that in uh, South Africa's batters didn't have the skills, even though Aidan Markram made one of the greatest counter-attacking hundreds in the history of the sport on that absolute shit tip of a pitch that mm. was going everywhere. And I mean, like, the crazy dangerous side of shit tip, not the, the sort of drab um, 600 plus 600 side. I mean, that century surely has to go down in the annals of one of as one of the true greats and he probably wouldn't have been able to play that innings if not for t20 cricket i would say yeah that that's all very fair in a losing effort to think aiden markram wasn't seen as a good enough player to come to australia for test cricket last year which does stand out now he's he's done so well in, in the white ball formats for south africa and he's 
probably now reached his peak. This will be the level that we can expect from Markram. Um, the question is, um, will he get enough test cricket to, um, to, um, to excel in the long term in this form? That, that's the outstanding question, but we've done enough on that in the last few weeks, so we won't go back there again. Um, we haven't got the formal pitch rating yet from the ICC. I think Chris Broad, the match referee, I'm, I'm not sure why that's been delayed, but mm. um, Chris Broad They're was the match referee. calculate ref. how low can they go. Yeah, well, exactly. Chris Broad was the, Broad was the match ref who, who marked indoor down earlier in the year before mm. um, you know, it went to a better hospital and got declared alive, um, <laughs> uh, which, um, uh, which I don't think that's, that'll be happening this time around. Mm. Rohit Sharma was, he's kind of, uh, you know, all, all the subtext and all the, subterranean stuff here so Rohit Sharma um, said the pitch was fine said no tr- no problem at all with the pitch before teeing off saying I don't mind um, being on pitches like this as long as everyone keeps their mouth shut in India and no one is talking about the pitches there so setting up the preconditions for what is doubtless going to be rolled out when England get there uh, in a few weeks time Gavaskar got involved in this as well as you'd expect he's always got a chip on his shoulder so our groundsmen do it deliberately but their groundsmen just get it wrong this relates to the piece, the interesting piece of this where the curator wasn't available at Newland, so someone else did it. It was their first test pitch. Um, so that might have been a... The curator was playing the SA20 <laughs> and was not available for... <laughs> so I don't know an awful lot about this story other okay. than, um, you know, it's trending towards that conspiracy... Uh, sorry, cock-up rather than conspiracy. Right. Uh, and, and, um, and India is suggesting that, well, if it's allowed to be a cock-up in... Mm. But it's intellectually inconsistent, right? Because Sonny's saying there that... Um, well, if they're allowed to dodge up their wickets here, I'm, I'm not, I don't really know what he's trying to say. Is he, is no. he acknowledging that they're um, that they're fixing their wickets in India, and thus it's fine for South well, Africa to fix them as well, or is, never, he, or is he denying that um, there's any intervention behind the scenes in India? There's and, never been any contention that the the pitches in India are prepared that way deliberately. Like that, nobody says that they're not. Like the 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 home curators don't say that they're not. The BCCI don't say that they're not. And we say they are, they're, they are, they're, they're, they're prepared to eyes. And, yeah. and the argument is that it's fine and good and right to do that. So fine, that's the argument. It's not, but nobody's saying that it was an accident. Nobody's going like, whoops, we just got 17 consecutive tracks wrong. Um, that's, and that's and the numbers in Indian Test cricket change so dramatically. Some of Jerry Kimber's work on yeah. this about batting averages in India pre and post when they've clearly made a strategic decision sure. to try and win Test matches with the quick yeah. kills. Now, um, like maybe they got the work experience kit in to do this pitch and it went horribly wrong. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't seem. It doesn't sit for me, given there was that track at the Wanderers. Was it last time India went to South Africa, Might be which was two the times same. ago? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it I last think, time? I think it was the last time because it was a three test series, and they yeah. and India managed to win one of them. But there was there was at least one of the pitches that was that was you know Mad Max Fury Road, like it was just exploding everywhere. It was dangerous. They somehow managed to complete the test match, but it was an absolute lottery. And so I reckon if you've had two of those tracks in consecutive tours. Um, sure, they weren't the same ground, but a couple of India visits to South Africa, they get absolute minefields. And yeah, India managed to win the game on, on the minefield. That's the nature of lottery wickets right, at times. Yeah. But that does seem less consistent to say, I mean, it's just something like that Gabba pitch against South Africa. We, you know, we've been to dozens of tests at the Gabba and we sure. know that we've never seen another pitch like that. So I did accept the explanation that that was an anomaly. Because well, they were, the, they the were devastated. At yeah. the, the Gabba, they were devastated about the about the scrutiny yeah. on what's otherwise seen as one of the better pitches. They yeah. just got it wrong. They, they wanted to juice it up because they wanted to have an exciting fast sure. pitch. And, in, and like we shouldn't have favoured either side, mm. given South Africa's attack included Rabada yeah. and Norkia yeah. and Jan- Janssen last yeah. year over here. Um, yeah, that, that's all. I think that's all fairly reasonable. But South Africa did win the toss and bat. Like, you know, yeah. they weren't exactly in on it. If that's right. the case, you know, Dean Elgar wasn't, oh, right, um, we've had a track prepared to um, to make... And, and it doesn't stand to reason anyway because India's fast bowlers are of the best in the world. So I, I, I don't, I don't know a, whether it's like they've this pitch has been rolled out with a view to um, executing a quick kill of India. I don't think it's a, a conspiracy thing, but I think it could be like, okay, well, we're, we're just going to make sure we give them a nice, a really juicy track here in order to, because this is something that won't suit the visiting yeah. team. And yeah. then, and, and we'll back ourselves to handle it better. And, but that doesn't... And, and it went wrong. It got too extreme, but... I don't know. We'd, whichever way it goes, okay, uh, that pitch was a problem, right? So, yes. I mean, the, the sort of default defensive India position is, um, oh, you never criticise those pitches. No, everybody criticises exactly. those pitches. Yeah. And, and, and that pitch will get downgraded will by the ICC, downgraded. appropriately so, and it won't be reprieved by the ICC because, well, it won't. It did it indoor, but it won't here. Mm. And if India, when they play England in a couple of months, have five tracks that are set up 
in the same way that the pitches that we saw at indoor Nagpur and to an extent Delhi, although that was a little bit different, where earlier this year the world will say exactly what the world should say, mm. which is that the competitive balance is not being enabled between bat and ball in order to um, support the home side. And it's perfectly reasonable criticism. And sure. um, I think I think that the response to some of this is quite telling. Yeah.